everyone, it's Sevi. The 1.2 special program of Star Rail just revealed four brand new relic sets to give us more build options and grinding frustrations. In this video, I want to give my quick pre-release thoughts on how much value these sets can offer and if they're worth spending our trailblaze power on. Let's get right into it. Starting with the new two planar ornament sets, first up is the Rutilant Arena set. This is a direct parallel to the Inert Salsoto effect, but now it gives a basic attack and skill damage bonus rather than the ultimate and follow-up damage. The crit rate will very likely be 8% and the crit rate requirement is maybe 50% too? That's still speculation since I'm comparing it to the Inert Salsoto. As for the damage bonus, there might be room for this new set to go higher than 15% since it buffs skill and basic attack damage instead. By its 8% crit rate is already nice, but to unlock its full potential, this is perfect for characters whose bigger damage source comes from either their skill and or basic attacks. Since it's releasing a long blade, it might be poised to be one of his top planar set choices. Blade skill doesn't deal damage since it consumes his HP, but it enhances his basic attack, which then deals increased AoE damage. That will be the only thing getting buffed by this set. But his ultimate attack also looks strong, and he also does a follow-up attack via his talent stacking mechanic. Whether or not the Rutilant Arena is noticeably better than or close enough to the Inert Salsoto can be clearer when we have final multipliers. Other than Blade, who else can the 4-piece effect be best suited to? Generally, a lot of other characters will make good use of this. Hook enhances her skill, Ching Chui has enhanced basic attacks, Zeal's skill does a lot of damage, Welt can be a sub-DPS with his skills and basics, and so on. Anyway, I'm assuming we'll get more DPS units that are more reliant on their skill and basic attacks, and so the Rutilant Arena set can get get more best users moving forward. But I think the more important reveal is its companion planar set, the Broken Keel. This set increases the wearer's effect resistance, and when they hit a certain amount of effect resistance, it increases all allies' crit damage. That in itself is a really good 2-in-1 effect for most supports. Effect resistance is quite important as it prevents units from being crowd-controlled or debuffed. If a buffer support is disabled or delayed especially, that can mess up your setups or buffs, which will significantly affect the run. If it's a healer, then you lose access to emergency healing mechanics like Bailey's Revival or Lotch's Auto Heal, which might spell the difference between success in dire situations. So there is a good incentive to build effect resistance on your supports to boost their survivability and make their utilities more reliable, on top of building HP and defense to make them tankier. At least, this set rewards you even more for building effect resistance because that now lets you buff your entire team's crit damage too. One very applicable character that comes to mind is Bronya, since her ult's team-wide crit damage boost partially scales on Bronya's own crit damage stat. This also synergizes really well with certain equipment. For example, there's a light cone, perfect timing, which gives a healing bonus increase based on the effect resistance of the character. If you pair that with a broken keel set, that's like double dipping into the effect resistance for more value. It's a direct alternative to the Fleet of the Ageless set, which gives the wearer an HP bonus, and when they hit 120 speed, your entire team gets an attack bonus. At least attack bonus is a direct damage boost to most units regardless if they crit or not, whereas crit damage boosts are only really useful to units that crit consistently. Since we're about to delve more into damage over time, or DOT teams, note that DOT effects applied by characters cannot crit and scale mainly from attack and the respective elemental damage bonus, so attack may be more valuable in that case. We've yet to get a final value to how much effect resistance will be required, so I'm curious to see what the number will be. Effect resistance stats can be harder to accumulate, since you can mainly get them through substats, minor trace bonuses of a character's kit, and very select character abilities and light cones. No relic piece can give effect resistance as a main stat, so hopefully the set will have a generally attainable stat requirement that won't require godlike substat effect resistance rules to achieve. But characters who have effect resistance as part of their bonus stats will definitely have this set come more naturally to them. The more we see of enemies, and bosses especially, who can inflict debuff effects, the more that effect resistance and this set will gain value. But even just now, it's just going to be a really, really valuable support set. All in all, I think the Broken Keel will be a great set with good generalist utility for support units, whereas the Rudolent Arena is a good alternative for damage boosting sets. More or less, it's in close competition versus Space Ceiling Station or Inert Sal Soto, depending on what the unit values more among the different set bonuses. It's also efficient to have these two sets in the same simulated universe. You're getting a good support set and DPS set, kind of like World 3 and 6, so it'll be a good world to sink more Trailblaze power in. 
Aside from those planar ornaments, we're getting two new relic sets also in the same cavern. The Longevous Disciple gives a max HP increase for the two-piece effect, and the four-piece effect lets the user gain crit rate whenever they get hit or have their HP consumed, which is also a stackable buff. The two-piece max HP will be especially good for HP scaling healers and any unit that scales on max HP moving forward. However, it will also be a decent option on supports that want to prioritize being tanky enough. The four-piece set is certainly more tailored to units that have their own HP consuming mechanics. The best current candidates are Blade and Arlen specifically. They can both make use of the max HP increase to boost their survivability as they cannibalize and revitalize their own HP pools, but the crit rate bonus they get from the set will help them deal more damage. Clara should also be a good candidate for this set. Since she's played as a sort of hybrid tank DPS, the HP helps her survivability and the crit rate helps her damage, so it's a good 2-in-1 set for her. What I am wondering about this 4-piece effect's wording is if getting hit even if you don't take damage can still proc the crit rate stacking effect, so will shielded units still benefit from it? If that's the case, at least this set will have more viability among other units. However, if it strictly requires the hit to deal damage to the wearer as well, then this set will just be better suited to units that can intentionally reduce their HP or who actually want to get hit and receive damage. Meanwhile, the Messenger Traversing Hacker Space's 2-piece effect gives the user a speed bonus, and for the 4-piece effect, if they use their ultimate on an ally, this gives an extra team-wide speed bonus. However, this is not stackable with other units using the same set. Between these two new two-piece sets, the more insanely good value is definitely the Hacker Space's two-piece speed bonus. Almost all units will benefit from speed bonus effects as that helps hit certain speed breakpoints to potentially get more turns and cycles and before the enemy moves. Speed bonuses also give you more ways to hit speed locked effects aside from just relying on speed main stat and substat rolls or external speed buffs. Previously, we only had the Musketeer set to give units a speed bonus via relics, and the main problem was that you needed the full set to unlock its specific speed bonus. But getting a full set with good substats will be more difficult, and the attack and basic attack damage aren't necessarily always ideal for specific units who mainly just want the speed bonus. At least now we have a more accessible relic set to increase speed that can be paired with another relic set. The mixed pieces can be more beneficial than the four-piece Musketeer set. Supports or damage dealers can both benefit a lot from the two-piece speed bonus bonus, and even if you still end up with a 2-piece attack set 2-piece speed set which is very close to Musketeer, then you'd still end up having more flexibility in choosing pieces with good stats. So all in all, I'm glad we have more flexible and efficient options moving forward. And then we get to the Messenger's 4-piece effect which gives your entire team a speed bonus. First take note of the condition though. The ultimate needs to be used on an ally, whether single target or team wide. For our Harmony units, Bronya, Tingyun, and Asta fall under this criteria, but Yukong will not since her ult deals single target damage. For Abundance, who are still viable users, only Bailu and Natasha can take advantage of this since Locha's ult also targets the enemy. It also isn't stackable, so coexisting teammates with the same 4-piece set might want one of them to switch to another set. However, it's also quite possible that you have two users of this set in the team and they can take turns in triggering the 4-piece effect so that they can cover one another's ultimate downtimes depending on how long the buff lasts and provide a very high uptime on the speed bonus. You'll most likely want to put this on the viable Harmony units, and generally speaking, this is going to be a new best-in-slot set for them. Even Asta, who already buffs speed, can still make great use of this, as that just lets you hit even higher speed breakpoints. And for future supports who have ally targeting ults, this set will very likely be a contender for their best relic set options. Anyway, since these two sets share a relic cavern, it can also be a somewhat efficient place to farm. The 4-piece Longevous Disciple is a more niche set, but the 2-piece HP bonus set can now be used for mixed relic builds on Natasha and Bailu and any HP scaling unit in the future. If you get the 2p speed bonus set, that's a very viable set on so many units right now. But the real grind is getting a 4-piece messenger set. Since our supports aren't as picky with main stats, then it'll be a bit easier to farm a decent enough 4-piece set. As long as they can give the team-wide speed buff, then it's all good. If you're a Blade or Arlen main and you're ready to start farming for a full Disciple set, then that's a total win for farming efficiency as you're farming for for both your DPS and supports. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be farming any of these sets as they come out in the new version and which character you're farming it for. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!